Pedro, I've been following cosmology as a non-cosmologist or, or non-professional physicist for 40 years now, and uh, it's a subject that I've always enjoyed philosophically and remarkably in the last few decades. It's become a, a real science, I think, shocking everyone. Um, what has been your experience in terms of cosmology as a real science? And from that um, from that history, and as you see the trajectory, what can we say about the future? Where, where will it go? So I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm kind of a, I'm the progeny of modern cosmology. I, I started my yeah. PhD the year that the COBE satellite uh, announced their results. Now, l let me explain. The COBE satellite was a satellite mission, um, a NASA mission that mapped out the relic radiation left over from the Big Bang, this bath of light, which has a temperature of about 2.7 degrees Kelvin. Um, which is right above absolute zero, 2.7 degrees above absolute zero. <laughs> exactly, right above absolute zero. And the key thing is that this radiation has very small ripples. They're ripples which are, it's very smooth, incredibly smooth, but it has these slight ripples which are about one part in 100,000. Um, and the key thing about these ripples is we, we see them as that the universe had structure at, at that time when, they, when, the, when this relic radiation was left over. And these ripples are in some sense the seed of, mm. seed of galaxies that we see today. So it all fits together. When we look out at the universe now, we see distributions of galaxies forming this cosmic web with voids, filaments and clusters. We now know where it began from this light. And the, the, Kobe, the, you know, the Kobe results kind of launched modern cosmology. What year was that? 92, 1992, um, and so we could now we could now sew things together. You know, the very early universe to the late universe. We could ha we had quantitative measurements, you know, precise measurements that we could start um, uh, working with to, to constrain cosmology. And over the last you know more than 25 years, the results have increased. You know, the, the the precision of the results have gone up by a factor of 100 to 1,000. So now we have this incredibly precise measurement of the universe, and it's just going to get better. Now. The state of play at the moment is that we can measure things in cosmology incredibly precisely and we can start digging at some of the foundational issues like what is the theory of gravity, um, you know, what, is the, what, are, what might be the fundamental particles that uh, uh, play a leading role in the early universe. But you can ask the question of, and where is this going to end? And it's not going to get better indefinitely. There's a kind of a limit to the information content in the universe that we can observe. And it's quite possible that in the next few decades we'll hit it. We'll be able to map out the whole observable universe to incredible precision. We'll be able to bring down these errors, but there's going to be a threshold. There's going to be a threshold be below which we, 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 we can't go. The thing is, it's not just from the CMB that now we're getting information. It's not from this, only from the CMB that we're going to learn more about the universe. We're, we're mapping out the distribution of galaxies to incredible precision. Let me give you an example. There is a telescope that is currently being built in South Africa and partly in Australia, the Square Kilometre Array, which will yeah. produce surveys with many billions of galaxies. Right? This is, you know, it's incredible. We'll map out in the minutiae of how the universe is, is built up. Now, the point is, we're going to, this is the best we can do because there's a finite number of galaxies that we can measure, right? And right. there's, you know, there's a finite number of measurements we can do. And so there's, uh, there's a, gonna, we're going to reach a point below which we, we won't be able to learn more, and we're going to have to live with that. And so one question, for example, you might ask yourself is, will we ever figure out how the universe began? You know, what was the mechanism that led to the beginning of the universe? Um, people posit there, there was this theory of inflation. How well will we understand the theory of inflation? Um, so there's, there's going to be, I think there's going to be a limit to cosmology. There's going to be a point beyond which we're not going to be able to measure, and there are questions which we will not be able to answer, mm -hmm. even with the best measurements that we'll ever be able to do. Let, let's look at what are the key measurements. You mentioned the cosmic microwave background, CMB, and you can get finer and finer precision in terms of the temperature of the, uh, of, of the, of the, of the whole sky. And so the points will be very precise. And you mentioned the distribution of galaxies with the, the new surveys, the Sloan Sky Survey, all the different ones that you have, you'll be able to. Are, are those the two key uh, um, kind of uh, cosmological databases that we're talking about? So there are, there are, those are two of the key cosmological what, bases. What so there's a the cosmic microwave background, there's the distribution of galaxies. Right. Uh, I think the, the, the surveys to pay attention to are something called the LSST, the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, the Euclid Satellite, um, and the Square Kilometre Array. But there's also, we now have been able to do this incredible thing. We look at very distant galaxies, we measure 
the, we, we, we look at their shapes and yeah. the light that they emit passes through space-time. Intervening space-time is slightly distorted because of the distribution of stuff, that's Einstein's theory. Um, the galaxies are dist di distorted, we measure these distortions. Um, what we say is that these galaxies are lensed and by measuring this lensing we can infer what space-time is doing. Yeah, gravitational lensing. Exactly, yeah. and so gravitational lensing is, is another example. Oh, okay. of, that's, that's and a good it's a, one. And it's a, a really powerful so method. So gravitational lensing because, it be good because light is, is, is transformed by the curvature of when mass is there it curves space so the light beam curves because exactly. it's, 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 it's going straight within the uh, within its own world but because of mass it curves and so then you can use that to measure the uh, characteristics of space-time itself. It's basically you, you know you measure you, you, uh, you know a galaxy is emitting light the light is distorted as it moves through space-time right, right. um, you you can kind of say something about the distortions of this space-time and if you from the distortions of space-time and Einstein's theory, you can say, what is causing this distortion? Right. And so you make another map of the underlying, right. for example, dark matter, which is distorting space-time. Right. And so in one sense, that's an in, that you have, right now, three independent kind of views of, of the same exactly. sky. All in different ways, yeah. all at, at different scales. And, and so it's, it's really amazing. It's an, it's an amazing, and, and the incredible thing is, People are on board with doing this. Funding agencies are on yeah, board with, right. you know, letting us do this. So we're going to get to a point where we, we've got everything really measured. You know, we're going to have everything measured. And then what? You know, then what? You know, will we have solved some of the fund all the fundamental problems? I mean, another question that we might ask is, will we ever figure out what is causing the universe to expand the way it does. We see the universe, we seem to see that the universe is accelerating instead of decelerating. Um, we say that there's some form of dark energy. Will we be able to figure out what this dark mm. energy is? Will we, will we be able to figure out if Einstein's theory of gravity is correct on those scales? So if we look at this remarkable achievement of, uh, of, of getting to the potential limit of what we can see about the universe from all these different mo modalities, um, if I step back from it, I say, you know, we've only had a few thousand years of human history, a few hundred years of real science, and it's, it's been barely a century since uh, Einstein's uh, uh, special theory of relativity and general relativity. Uh, and yet we're at this point so quickly, and the universe is almost 14 billion years old, and within these very short parameters, human beings have gotten to this point. That, the fact that there are limits to cosmology, that there are the, that we won't be able to go beyond a certain level of precision in measuring things means that we might not be able to answer some of the most fundamental questions like, you know, how did the universe begin? You know, what, what was the theory? People believe that there's this, a lot of people believe that the universe underwent this period of inflation at very early times, that it expanded in a particular way that led to the universe being what it is today. The hope is that we'll be able to figure out what that is. Um, it may be that we will never be able to do that. We will never be able to figure out what inflation is, if it actually happened, how the universe began.